Thank you for joining us today for a discussion on obesity. Obesity is certainly an important topic of interest for the public health community, policy makers, and consumers alike. And all are seeking facts and advice based on science. Today we have with us Dr. Elizabeth Whelan, President of the American Council on Science and Health, an independent, nonprofit consumer education organization, which she founded more than 30 years ago to add balance to the debate on public health issues. Dr. Whelan holds a master's in public health from the Yale School of Medicine, and both a master of science and doctor of science from the Harvard School of Public Health. In addition, she has written a number of books on health and environmental issues, and has appeared on major media outlets, including MSNBC and Fox News, as well as in print publications, such as the New York Times. Also joining us is Dr. Karen Resnick Dolans, a registered dietitian and board certified specialist in sports dietetics and adjunct associate professor at Columbia University's Teachers College. Dr. Dolans holds a doctorate degree in nutrition education and exercise physiology from Columbia University's Teachers College. She is in private practice and has more than 25 years of experience helping kids, teens, and adults achieve their nutrition and fitness goals. In addition, she's worked with the New York Knicks for 10 years and currently consults to Columbia University Athletics. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Today we hope to provide our viewers with the facts on obesity and get your perspective on real world solutions to the challenge. Let's begin. My first question for you. We see and hear a great deal about obesity today. In fact, Every time you turn on the news, there are images of overweight Americans and stories about what it is that makes us all fat. Are we really in the middle of an obesity epidemic? And if so, do we know what's at fault? Obesity is a major public health challenge today, not only in this country, but in parts of the world. Um, it's the uh, underlying cause or a risk factor for many different serious diseases, including heart disease, diabetes, and certain forms of cancer like uterine and breast cancer. So we really have our work cut out for us in addressing this public health problem, which has been getting worse instead of getting better. And I think the, the main solution uh, we should uh, use is education, getting people to understand the balance between the calories you take in and the calories you expend in the form of exercise. Uh, but that's not going to be easy to do, but we have to do it. We certainly have seen a dramatic rise in the incidence of both obesity and overweight to the point where now about 66 percent of our population is affected. Um, that's happened for a number of reasons. For the most part, we tend to be far more sedentary as we do our daily work, and yet food is much more plentiful, so it's all around us. Everyone seems really focused on food, and I'm wondering, does physical activity really play an important role? Uh, if we cut back on the uh, calories we eat, isn't that enough? Well, actually, we have to pay attention to both sides of the energy balance equation. We have to look at how many calories we're putting in our bodies from both the foods we eat and, and the fluids that we drink, as well as how many calories that we're expending. And we need to learn how to balance that. Some say beverages such as soft drinks, juice drinks, and sports drinks are the cause of obesity and that they're at fault for the state of the nation. They say sodas are just empty calories, and in the case of sports drinks, salty sugar water that we just don't need. Dr. Dolans, as a sports dietitian, what's your take on sports drinks? Sports drinks have a purpose, and that purpose is to help maintain fluid and electrolyte balance for active people, and also to help sustain endurance exercise. And there are times when they can be actually quite beneficial, even for our kids. As an example, very often, I work with kids who are involved in sports after school, and they will go right from school when, where maybe they've had lunch at as early as 11 o'clock, and then they're on the playing fields until 6 o'clock or even later. Those kids need a source of both fluids and calories to help sustain them through their activity. In addition, the small amount of sodium that's in a sports drink is actually not what some people think. The amount of sodium in a, in a serving of a sports drink is less than is in a slice of bread. And that amount of sodium is very necessary to, again, help maintain fluid and electrolyte balance. 
And Dr. Whelan, how about the uh, soft drinks? So what's the what's your take on those? Well, the, the claim that soft drinks um, are a cause of obesity re really has no factual basis. There is no one food or food category that is the cause of obesity. And soft drinks can be a source of pleasure for people. You know, eating and drinking um, are not just physiological events that keep us alive and going. They're also a source of pleasure. And it's OK to have treats now and then, as long as they're in moderation. And sugar-sweetened sodas, for some people, can be a treat. Aha, but we today have choices when it comes to um, these treats and sodas. We can have uh, full sugared sodas at 150 calories per serving, or we can choose diet so soda that has zero calories per serving. So it's really a matter of what your needs are, what your uh, you know, caloric status is in terms of the ingestion that day, and you can make an informed choice. Okay, let's take a hard look at obesity in America. Some in the public health community have said that increased soda consumption parallels increases in obesity. That has something to do apparently with the liquid calories or the sugar that's in these drinks. Is any of that true? Is it an oversimplification? What's your take? It's definitely an oversimplification, and indeed parts of it are not true because uh, as far as I've read, the consumption of sugar-sweetened soda has actually declined in the last few years, and obesity has increased. You know, these uh, sodas and other uh, similar beverages, sh sugared beverages, account for a relatively small proportion of the calories in our diet. According to the National Cancer Institute, these drinks generally, um, which go beyond soda, account for about 5% of the calories. So uh, this is not something that we can really pin the obesity epidemic on. Look, that's very, very interesting, but some are still seeking what they see as quick ways to reduce obesity. One of them is taxing soda and other beverages. They say that a tax would curb consumption, which would then reduce obesity rates. What do you think about that? Can I just cut out my favorite soda and then uh, I'll be fine? When you hear people say that soda causes obesity, that is a flawed statement. Or they say that if we tax soda, we will not be as obese. That doesn't make any sense. Indeed, there's a couple of states in the country, I think it's West Virginia and Arkansas, where they have actually taxed soda for many years. And they're among the uh, most obese states in the nation. Mm -hmm. So something that these, these arguments do not hold up under scrutiny. Dr. Dolans, you have worked with athletes, from young athletes to professional athletes. Athletes consume a large amount of calories each day, but they stay in great shape. So is physical activity even more important than what you eat when it comes to maintaining a healthy weight? I don't think that we can say it's more important. I think, again, that you have to look at both sides of the energy equation. A individual, a typical individual is not going to expend in the day anywhere near what a professional athlete is going to expend in terms of calories. However, we do know that including physical activity is very important for a host of medical reasons. It can help control blood sugar, it can help control blood fats, it increases bone strength. Extremely important beyond the fact of the number of calories that you're expending when you are exercising. In fact, current recommendations are for individuals who are hoping to avoid an increase in weight, they should be physically active for at least 30 minutes five times a week. Whereas someone who's already dealing with overweight and trying to reduce their weight needs to expend at least twice that amount, needs to be physically active for a good hour a day five times a week, as well as addressing the issue of how many calories they're taking in from food. Hmm. Well then. To your earlier point, Dr. Dolans, what are some of the most effective ways to tackle obesity? Approaches that really make a difference for our children and ultimately their children. I think it's very important that our children learn to appreciate the taste of fresh foods, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, whole grains. I think it's important that they are taught the importance of being physically active throughout the day and not just sitting in front of a computer or a television. I think it's very important that they be engaged in physical activity and that they also learn not to be so mindless about the foods that they're eating. I think that it's very important that our children are taught about an energy budget and learn how to balance what they're eating with what their body needs. Well, thanks to both of you for a thoughtful and enlightening conversation on a very important topic. 
And we hope we've answered many of the questions floating out there in the media and the blogosphere. And we, we encourage you to continue to seek information about ways that you can maintain a healthy weight through nutrition education and exercise. We're glad you joined us and we'll see you next time.